minds of that time were spewing nothing more, nothing less than theories and opinions. But we thought it was knowledge. We, we absorb it or consume it as if it's knowledge. No, it, it, no, it isn't. If you understand thinking, you realize that they were just putting out theories and opinions. They, rec- they were so narcissistic, though, however, and believed that it was knowledge. But a lot of it was not. A lot of it was trial and error. And a lot of things that were breakthroughs in our were from errors and mistakes. A lot of the breakthroughs and a lot of the the pioneering attributes that are what we are dealing with now is were trial and error and mistakes. Welcome to the Evolution of the Consciousness podcast. Love is spoken here with your host and guide, Michelle. Carithers. Morning, morning, everybody. Evolution of the consciousness. Love is spoken here. I'm Michelle Carithers on this Saturday morning, March the 9th, 2024. I hope everybody's doing fantastic, magnificently, and marvelous. Let me get myself situated here in my seat because I am. I'm doing fantastic, magnificently, and marvelous. No complaints per se over here in my neck of the woods. There's always things to, I mean, things you can complain about, but in most cases, you know, with my situation, you know, it is what it is, right? We love to throw out these type of, um, I don't know, metaphors, abriumism, however you pronounce that. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Sometimes I wonder if we are even listening to ourselves, paying attention to ourselves and being completely honest about our patterns and behaviors and actions and habits and this and that and the other. I love paying attention to what's going on, you know, in my environment, in the social media world, uh, on the internet, per se, that whole, that whole entity, because, you know, social media is an entity now. It's, it's grown into an entity. You know, it's no different than Earth, really. It's taken on a mind of its own. It's created a mind of its own, and it happened collectively. We collectively allowed it to happen. So it's an entity. It's its own individual separate from Earth, you know, if you want to look at it figuratively and metaphorically. And I pay attention to a lot that that is said because I enjoy conversations. I, I enjoy communicating with people. Just want to know what people are feeling, what's going on inside of them, really, is more important to me. because. Because of the fact that we are so, we are walking contradictions. I said that, and everyone says that. And but do they understand what that means? You know, to say that someone's a walking contradiction. We are all walking contradictions, all of us. And our and our responsibilities and accountabilities is to resolve those, and not you know because you can't really get away from contradictions. That's part of developing and growing. But you can um, do whatever you can to resolve the the, the massive amount of. Uh, contradictions that's that do, it's not in alignment with what we're thinking and what we're talking about and and but our behaviors and actions does reflect what we're thinking if you you know if you if you if you pay attention enough but a lot of us have our own issues I mean, we don't have time to be worried about other people and their contradictions which is true unfortunately a lot of those a lot of people that are in contradictions and the, our leader are leading us too, and so we need to keep that in mind. You know, we have a lot of uh, massive uh, deception and manipulation from people that lead us, or claim they're leading us, and you know they have their own agenda in mind, and so we all know that. But I wanted to talk about something that I'm noticing too, and I do recognize that it is so so difficult to make changes in your life. Okay, and I know a lot of a lot of us are we get all enthusiastic, you know, during the first of the year, you know, and, and claim that we're gonna do this, claim we're gonna do that. We make all these promises to ourselves, and most of us fail at that because you know it, this this makes sense because what we're, we're entering into springtime and we're in the, in the month of March, you know, and already people have uh, broken quote unquote their resolutions 
especially when it relates to interpersonal relationships with people. You know, we vow that, and I know a lot of us do, we vow to to work on ourselves and, you know, in such places like losing weight, improving communications with people, you know, attempting to bring in some peace and love in your life, because that's what a lot of people are asking for, I noticed, too, when I kind of navigate around, you know, the, the most people say they want peace. They say they want peace, peace, peace. But, you know, their actions and behaviors prove otherwise. Because, you know, I know I, I know of someone. I haven't met this person. And I, I really don't plan to now that I've uh, started to uncover some things. Uh, this person is fueled, fueled, fueled with hatred towards people. And this person is... Like I told you, when 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 people are not thinking properly, that means that at some point they're going to start losing brain cells, and then at that point atrophy, and then at that point, you know, it, it, it's all downhill from there. Now this particular person, you know, I met them whew, some time ago, and you know we we kind of hit it off, you know. I thought they, they, I felt that we were kind of like in a like-mindedness and we are. So let, let me make that clear as well about like-mindedness. You know, it it is important to, to kind of circle yourself with people of like-mindedness because you can learn a lot from there. It doesn't, I mean, like-mindedness is different from, you know, anything else. I mean, you want to develop an interpersonal relationship from people. That are like mindedness, but that's not necessarily the case because sometimes you have to you have to work with these people. Remember, you know, you have to uh, kind of associate with these people and you have to do the best you can to control how you manage yourself around such people. You know, because these some of these people, you know, help you to provide for yourself, unfortunately. You know, so you have to work with them and you have to. You know, you have to gather what you can from it and then make the best of it. And that's what it is with everything. You have to make the best of it. Uh, we are we are so massively crowding each other's space that some people you just cannot avoid, no matter what you do and how you navigate through your life and how you structure your life. Sometimes you need, you depend on those type of people, you know, to get information so that you can, you know, continue connecting the dots in your life or whatever you're developing. In other words, you're going to work with difficult people. You're going to work with people that are filled with hatred, okay? You know, sometimes they provide services to you, like, as I said, that you need, and you can't avoid them. And if you do avoid them, you know, then somehow you meet up with them in, in other phases of your life. So the best thing to do, which is I've... Uh, you know, suggested and, and, and told you to consider is to be neutral about everybody, be neutral about everything and just kind of make sure you are flowing through your life where certain people are not affecting you. I mean, yes, you can go to, say, for example, you go to a certain place and the service is horrible. You say, OK, let me go to another similar place. And, you know, you never know because that same because it's usually one or two persons that are providing such horrible service but then you go somewhere else and somehow I'm telling you somehow some way you will still possibly meet up with similar types of services or that person may even transfer there <laughs> and so in other words you just can't get away from some of these difficult people there's just way too many of us on this planet where is everybody going I told you about the great escape the exodus, you know, where are people going? People are scrambling, invading cities, towns, countries, neighborhoods, communities, villages. People are invading. There's a lot of people moving around. This is going to go on forever and ever and ever until there's a collapse. And then that's going to be the end of it. So <laughs> that's a grand look at it. You just kind of have to accept people and limit your contact with them. You know, if you got to, if you have a, like me, I'm, you know, I'm entrepreneur, you know, small business type, you know, that kind of mentality. 
So sometimes you just have to work with what you have. And so my point is to neutralize it. I, I think I told a story about a while ago. I mean, not a while ago, but this is way back in my early early 20s or middle 20s. I was working in an office with a bunch of people, and we used to have to talk back and forth to um, other vendors for services and blah, blah, blah. And I remember this one particular person, no one liked talking to this person. This person was, it's like when you would talk to this person, it was like you were talking to, a, a, you know, somebody breathing fire into the phone, you know, that, that you, could, you could feel that intensity and heat and all that kind of build up energy in that person's voice. And, you know, I remember, I told you, I, I used to have this, and I still do, I, I used to have this kind of, kind of life. You know, I just really didn't care, to be honest. I, You know, I had a nonchalant, I guess is what a lot of people say. But I figure, you know, that's whatever. And I can understand sometimes about why people would have that kind of fire-breathing, intense personalities, especially when you talk to them on the phone. You can pick up so much from someone's voice anyway from the phone. You really can. And now you got the videos, but then the videos are going to start getting manipulated. You're not going to know who you're talking to, but that's another that's another subject. But anyway, this person used to call every day. We needed this person to call every day because this person was needed to get our jobs done. So no one liked talking to this person. And so over a course of time, I was able to understand this person. And that's what I usually do. If I have to work with you, I, I need to understand you. And so I basically understood her. <laughs> and over the course of time, it took, a, it took a while, you know, I noticed her tones started to change. Her sounds and tones started to change. And the people in the office was like, what's going on, Michelle? And, what, you, know, you know, she's talking to you and da, da 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 you know. So we started having communications, conversations and blah, blah, blah. So what I had to do was just, you know, take it off of me. Her problem wasn't my problem. And, you know, and, and allow her to, you know, I got what I needed from her and then, okay, I'm good. I wasn't trying to kiss up to her. I don't do that. You know, I don't below, I don't subjugate myself. Okay. I'm not submissive to no one. And I'm not, well, whatever. <laughs> and I, and I do whatever I can to give people the benefit of the doubt. And see what in the world is going on here. So, but over the course of years, you know, because I was in that position for a while, you know, like I said, one, you know, I always talked to her on the phone. And, and then, like I said, her sounds and tones changed. She started to laugh a little bit more on the phone. And, and she, she sort of kind of relaxed. And, uh, and then one day out of a surprise, I, I remember I was expecting for her to call. I'm like. Why hasn't blah, blah, blah called? Because I need these numbers so I can do this or that and the other. And then one day she showed up to the office and we, and we, we all met her. And, you know, she turned out to be I mean, no different than any of us. You know, she, she made, a, made, a, made a point to come see me, though. <laughs> uh, and, you know, and that was, that, that was, it was just a, it felt good. And, it, you know, but anything can set people off, you know, and, um, and and not everybody, you know, when someone's filled with that kind of rage and hatred, they're not going to treat everybody that way. Not if that's what, if you know, in other words, they're not going to be projecting that if it's not projected back to them. You know, in other words, that's why I say you have to counter people sometimes. You have to, just, especially if you need them and you want to do everything you can to work with them, you have to do everything in your power to counter. But, you know, as I was, but but at some point, you know, Enough is enough to be battered and 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 dealing with someone full full of hatred. That that's a that's a battle because it's it's such a it's imbalanced and it's 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 harsh. You know, self love is one thing, but self hatred is another, and it projects itself in that way in your sounds and your tones, and that's painful to be the receiving end of that. So I know why a lot of people have a pro, you know want to do everything in their power to, to change people and make make but some but sometimes let's be very clear in most cases self-hatred is no different than anything else you know it it, it requires an innermost being to change and 
when someone's filled with self-hatred, because it's different from self-love, even though, you know, you want to attempt to neutralize it, you need to understand what's the difference. There's no reason, there's no logic, there's no rational way to deal with that 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 intense self-hatred of somebody. In other words, I can't do a thing about it. All I can do is do the best I can to counter it, okay, and defend myself, especially if I feel physically or someone I love, I feel physically threatened that way. Okay, I'm going to handle it. But for the most part, there's not a goddamn thing I can do. You know, that is an internal process that that person has to work out. So I brought this up because, you know, again, I noticed that, you know, we I could tell by listening to particular people and this, you know, particular person in general, you know, I thought this person, I, you know, this person is extremely knowledgeable. They're, to me, they have, the, you know, a high level of knowledge. Now, I'm not sure how it's absorbed, but they, they are, they're always spouting out past philosophers, past psychiatrists, past scientists. They, they're always doing whatever they can to be comparing them sort of speaking and, and attempting to understand these these past fight these past intellectual talking heads a lot of us attempt to understand intellectual talking heads of the past and i told you that's not possible unless you could sit down and talk to these people okay there's enough going on for a lot of us to have realized if you're really truly thinking that a lot of what was said to us in the past was a bunch of garbage Okay, and and the and the so-called minds of that time were spewing nothing more, nothing that less than theories and opinions. But we thought it was knowledge. We we absorb it or consume it as if it's knowledge. No, it, it no, it isn't. If you understand thinking, you realize that they were just putting out theories and opinions. They rec- they were so narcissistic, though. However. And believed that it was knowledge. But a lot of it was not. A lot of it was trial and error. And a lot of things that were breakthroughs in our were from errors and mistakes. A lot of the breakthroughs and a lot of the the pioneering attributes that are what we are dealing with now was, were trial and error and mistakes. So in other words, some of these so-called minds of the past had no idea, number one, what they were possibly talking about, honestly. If we have the the, the severe contradictions as what we have now, okay, it was was happening the same, it was the same thing was happening in the past. So we were supposed to just, you know, and what we weren't doing is just applying thinking modes. You know, we we, we were not, because I told you, a lot of these so-called, scientists and philosophers and and engineers all of those a lot of them had 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 great intentions however but a lot of them were were self it was about self you know that so-called ego love you know they wanted the attention from public they wanted the attention from the women and so sometimes when you have those kind of intentions and motivations and whatever it's called you know, you you can sometimes, you know, surprise yourself about what you can and what you cannot do. You know, you have you have a certain, you know, you're, you're looking for that attention. And that attention is obsessive. It's a, a attention-grabbing individuals. That that's that's like an addiction. You know, obsession. You know, you're obsessed, and and so you probably put in more, more. You, you know, you you probably do everything in your power to make sure, you know, you get that attention. So so you, you so you'll go above and beyond is my my point. And but what I think what was being determined, however, for a lot of the the the, the uh, so called great minds of our last what hundred two hundred years, they realized okay they were not getting the attention they were hoping and seeking for, and so they started to slip you know, so to speak, and not apply their own knowledge, you know, to what they what they were attempting to complete or, you know, what they were compl- uh, attempting to, uh, uh, you know, attain. So 
that's why that's why I say it's so important right now that we are thinking clearly and effectively about people that we can no longer ask questions of. I know a lot of people are attempting to manipulate things and 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 and, and uh, attempting to believe that they are the only ones that know exactly what the innermost beings of these past great minds, quote unquote. Okay, that that that's nothing more, nothing less than than delusional. Because and chances are, those great minds had no idea what they were attempting to seek, or, or what they were attempting to to discover. You know, it was it, it just became ego based. In other words, they need to pad their egos. They need to feel more important than everybody else. They need to keep their names in the newspapers back then. Keep their names on the radio, you know, radio broadcasts. And now what we have is the internet, and wow, it has unleashed a whole lot of this, these uh, so-called intellectual talking head, great minds. And, and see, and they won't admit that certain so-called knowledge presented to us from certain scientists, from certain philosophers, was nothing more, nothing less than garbage. But they're still attempting to, or it has nowhere else to go. It's, it, it, it wasn't proven. It wasn't proven scientifically. Okay? And so, but they still want to keep rolling with it and keep wanting to attach their name to it. And so, in other words, just burying, uh, just digging a ditch and ditch, you know, and burying themselves at the same time. So, so I... I notice again. I'm going to say this about self hatred. Uh, there's not a, not a goddamn thing I can do about someone that has that in their innermost being. The person that has it, they're the only ones that are going to have to decide to change that. And because of the, the limited the limited amount of time we have to live, most people are not making it, are not going to make it to a hundred. Okay, some will, of course, the righteous ones, the ones that are doing the best they can and taking care of themselves, that have genuine peace inside that they worked on to to cultivate, contemplate. Uh, but self hatred, you know, just like self love, you know, self love can see and sense and receive self hatred. Okay, self love, if you have that in your innermost being, you can see and know and and pick up self hatred, but it doesn't. You're not threatened by it because you're neutralized with self hatred too. You're neutralized, you know, on a on a figuratively and metaphoric level. You're neutralized with it, so you know what to look out for, you know. So, so I say to people, I know a lot of people do everything in their power to 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 be to to be rational and reasonable and logical with people that display this 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 affliction of self hatred, and you ought to continue to be. A logical, rational, and reasonable, and just allow that type of uh, energy of a of an individual to just pass. You know, you pass by it, know it's there, but do not. I would not attempt to engage it. You know, in other words, in 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 a you know in a in a exchange of conversation or, or attempt to you know be their friend. You know, and all this stuff that we do. You know, interfere is my my point. Stop interfering in it. As long as you are not in any danger yourself, stop interfering with it. Stop, you know, keep keep developing yourself, of course. But don't be concerned about them. Someone that's afflicted with this 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 acute self hatred, narcissism, all that. It's really not, you know, if you think about it clearly and effectively, it's not many people, especially in the leadership roles. You know, you're gonna have to let that let that go, in other words, with your expectations of that. And like I said, just protect yourself, protect your consciousness more than anything and not allow yourself to consume and become imbalanced with that as well. You can become imbalanced with self-hatred just as much as anyone else. There's something about that energy. It's, a, it's that fiery energy of, of negativity that can consume you. You know, whether you have, you know, like like I said, you I've developed myself enough to have myself protected against certain things. But I can just like everyone else, I can, as they say, fall off the wagon, you know, and that's what I've noticed about particular people. 
they 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 they've fallen off the wagon. So they're now back to that same habit of self hatred. You know, they did everything in their power, and they, and they're not going to accept it. A lot of people that are narcissistic, psychopaths, sociopaths, narcissists, clerics, or whatever you want to call them these days, they're not going to accept that they are defective. And they're not defective, but they're and they're thinking they're defective, but they're not going to accept any outside help to change their behaviors and actions. That has to be done inside. So I think that will cause a lot of us that are working to help people to to relax and let it go and make sure you don't interfere with the development of your consciousness attempting to reach the unreachable. They're unreachable when they get to that extremism of he- self hatred, and it 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 is it's in you know they're cocky, they know it all, they're very they they have a subtle aggressiveness in their sounds and tones, you know you can pick that up, you know they they, they you know it, so hatred is a little bit you know a lot of people think they understand hatred, you know it's not necessarily somebody yelling at you and calling you derogatory. Names. Chances are that person is just upset, and they're and they they're not necessarily hating you. You know that's why I said take the take it off the personal. They're just in a field with hatred of themselves. Something about hatred is going on inside of them. It has nothing to do with you. You may look like people that they hate, but still take it off the personal, please. And relax, <laughs> you know, especially those of you that are doing the best you can. Leave. Don't be concerned about, you know, other people. Make sure, okay, I'm still balanced here. I'm still relaxed. I'm still, you know, experiencing peacefulness. And, you know, don't let yourself slip in your development because you're concerned about people that have self-hatred, whether they have a hatred towards genders whether they have a hatred towards identities, whether they have hatred, especially hatred towards women. You know, pay attention to that. Protect the biological woman. I'm going to keep saying that. You know, especially our young women, our young girls, our young ladies, protect that energy of the, you know, protect the, you know, the, Protect the fabric of decency, you know, being kind and gentle, but yet defend yourself when necessary. You know, I was, I have certain relatives, you know, that I, that I noticed growing up back in the day where, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, you know, I'll just say certain people. I won't, you know, it's not necessarily relatives, so oof. <laughs> but where they were teaching their Young people, just be nice, just be nice. And I used to say to them, that's the last thing you want your children to be, just be nice. And so I said, they need to learn how to strap with somebody if they need to fight people off if they need to, whether they're wearing a dress, whether they're wearing jeans, you know, ma- you know, whatever these kids are wearing these days, you need to know how to strap. Put it on and fight, you know. You know, you know, put on the boxing gloves. I mean, be careful with my language, because you know. But yes, put on some boxing boxing gloves, figuratively and metaphorically, to say, look, okay, that you're ready to 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 roll in the dirt if you need to. That's what we're up against. So, protect our young women, that you know, and give them the the safety and the space and protection to grow up. And, you know, be all that they can be. I advocate, and I've and I made that very clear and effective, I advocate for biological women, regardless of their sexuality. Okay? So, and I said that also in the beginning, that's what I advocate for. And if you're listening to this and that bothers you, then there's millions of other content that you can find that will support your, what re- resonate with you. Okay? This is a long podcast this morning but you know sometimes you have to you have to be very clear and effective and put the information out so that it's i'm understood because that's what it's all about to understand people but again i advocate i advocate for the biological woman okay because i know deep within without the biological woman there is no society there are no communities so 
as a biological woman, you know, you're going to be faced with a whole lot of uh, adverse attention towards you, you know, and, and, and people, and it's, and it's, it's obvious in our behaviors and actions. So I don't have an issue with someone not accepting that. That's not my, that's not my responsibility anyway for someone to accept that. Okay. I know that there, I know my father protected us. Okay. My biological father, (laughs) you know, you know, he was strong and masculine, but yeah, he knew, he knew when to be gentle and kind. He protected me when I was growing up because I was getting a lot of attention from older men. And he knew that. I didn't know that. And so he will, he, you know, so he, it was almost like he was a, a silent defender. You know, he knew how to take that attention off of, off of, you know, he knew how to get rid of that attention to where I was safe in my neighborhood. I can do whatever I want. We were all, most of, most of us were free range, free range kids growing up in our neighborhood. And so, and I also had other angels protecting me as well. Angels can be male or female, by the way. I had those that were protecting me in the neighborhood as well, males, okay? And, you know, when I used to walk back and forth here or there or the other, there were certain men in the neighborhood that were protecting me, okay, and protecting the other kids from the predator. And then we also had predators there too. I told you that. There were predators in the neighborhood as well. So we had all walks of life. So I, uh, I, I suggest everyone, to, you know, just pay attention to the behaviors and actions of people in your life and people that you deal with and see if you, if you can kind of pick up certain things. You know, I know a lot of us don't have time for that and that's fine. I don't, I don't expect you to, but you know, just, just, you know, but every now and then just kind of pay attention, especially if you're working with them every day. A lot of people, we experience a lot of uh, terrorism, I say to our consciousness with our jobs, you know, in the job and the people that we work with in our jobs. But like I said, you have to work to neutralize that. And that's what I did. I was able to neutralize certain situations I got in to where it didn't affect me to where, you know, it, may, it was, it was, it was uh, annoying, of course, but it didn't stop me. It didn't back me down. Okay. I didn't go, like I said, I don't, I'm not subservient to anyone. Submissive, you know, I'm not going to allow anyone to sub- subjugate me as well. And, 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 and so I was not concerned. I was raised in a, in a community. I had the parents that helped develop that. And that's where it starts. So I hope that if anything you've, you've, got, you've taken away from this podcast this morning is it starts in the puberty and under. Start developing your children then how to be, you know, be able to, to defend their physicalness. You know, they don't have to be nice. Okay, nice is a trap in my opinion. If you're telling your kids to be nice, you can tell them to be kind and gentle, but you also want them to be able to defend themselves. Pay attention to their surroundings. Teach them how to do that. Teach them how to to work on their inside. You know, you have to start this now in their young ages and not wait until they graduate and think that that's going to they're going to pick it up. It's going to it's going to already be too late. Our, Our planet has evolved. Two, it has evolved uh, enough to where a lot of this stuff that we were picking up during our past is no longer relevant. Okay, but they can be guides. They're guides. You know, a lot of these scientists were just presenting guides, but in most cases, it was all theories and opinions. It was not knowledge. Okay, so... My theories and opinions, right? I, I accept responsibility and accountability for what I say and do. And I just want to make that clear and effective as well. Go ahead and send peace and love to everyone all over the stars and moon and mountains. It's about the evolution of the consciousness and trusting that and taking yourself there. Evolution of the consciousness. Love is spoken here. I'm Michelle Carruthers. Thank you so much for listening to the Evolution of the Consciousness podcast please make sure to leave us a review. If you wish to ask a question to Michelle, you can leave her an email at missmichellecarithers at gmail.com.